All right, here's the situation. Let's say you're a Star Wars fan. And in particular, you're really drawn to these astromech droids. R2, R4, R5. And you grow up really wanting one radio controlled. Then you grow up and you're looking around on YouTube and you see people actually making these radio controlled R2 droids and the like. And you're like, wow, I really got to have one of those. It's awesome. And then you find out that these guys are spending about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on their droids. And you don't necessarily have ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to spend making your life-size radio-controlled astromech droid. But maybe you're good with your hands and you can cut with foam and you can glue and you can put pieces together and you have at least a rudimentary awareness or knowledge of putting together radio-controlled things. That's where this guy comes in. This is my life-size, radio-controlled R5 droid. I call him R5-T8, or Tate. And he's, as you can see, as you can see, his primary colors are navy blue, sky blue, and overall white. And uh, in this video, I'm going to take you on a tour of R5-Tate and tell you how I can do a life-size radio-controlled astromech droid for maybe a few hundred, not thousands of dollars. All right, we'll start with the building materials. The, prim the primary load-bearing building material is this stuff. It's called foam core board. I've heard a lot of people refer to it as Dollar Tree foam. It's paper covered and styrofoam sandwich. You see it in there. And this stuff, uh, I work in a picture frame shop, as you can see. So I get this stuff in four foot by eight foot sheets, but you don't need sheets that big to do a droid like this. This foam is cut with a straight edge and a razor blade and it it's the primary load bearing foam. It's the strongest foam that I'm using here and I use it for the legs. This raised portion of the leg as well. The feet And inside there you can see the axis for the legs up there on the shoulder is a cardboard tube. And that wooden dowel in there is to support the legs in their extended position. In other words, R5 rides along with his uh, middle leg out because having the middle leg retracted and be radio controlled just really wouldn't work. Originally the plan was to actually put a radio controlled toy car in the center foot. So R5 here is built especially very light. I tried to make R5 as lightweight as possible. Then when I got the main body and chassis and legs built and I put a toy car in there, a little $20 toy car, and he just didn't want to move even though he was all lightweight. I decided to change totally the way I did the power system. And if I had it to do over again, I would build him much heavier out of heavier foam. The main place where I saved the weight was the wrapping of his body. This body here is wrapped in three millimeter Depron with just a few strategic strips of that um, foam core board to, supply, to su provide structural support. But he's very lightweight. All done, I'm figuring he's going to weigh, even life size, I think, figure he's going to weigh maybe in the three to four pound range. Because he, does, he doesn't weigh a lot with the um, electronics either, as I'll get to in just a moment. Next we'll move to the feet because that's where all the money is, pretty much. The, um, on these plywood and basswood supports in the feet are, you, you'll recognize, some of you may recognize, that is a GWS 
gearbox and motor, brushed motor assembly. Let me see there. Now, that thing cost, I can't remember exactly, I think it was in the area of 20 to 30 bucks each, and that is the motor. And I just took the propeller shaft and put a wheel on it. That shaft, the hex nuts, the washers, the gearbox, the motor, and its wires, all came pre-assembled in a package off of eBay. Just look for GWS motor gearboxes and you should be able to find a package pre-assembled with a motor and gearbox already in there. And that is a two and a half inch lightweight foam wheel just thrown on that hub, on, on that shaft. Wired up the leg into the body where I've got a pair of brush speed controllers from radio controlled cars in here. They're wired up into a Y harness, kind of a flux capacitor kind of thing that goes to that Dean's plug, which will plug into the battery. And you here you see an AR6200 receiver straight out of radio controlled model airplanes that I fly. As for the battery, R5's battery is going to be this. It is a 4500 milliamp one cell lipo just a single cell lipo anything more than that is just going to be way too much power for the motors and um, throw this guy over the edge but that's all you need you need one cell but you want a lot of milliamps in there so far so far I haven't um, assigned an actual place for the speed the batteries yet but the LiPo will probably go about there, and we're going to put a two-cell A123 receiver pack right about there. And this will be hidden up by a magnetic, magnetic sealed hatch over here over this deck, and then this will be covered up, and that will be covered up. But this is our primary electronics compartment and we'll put a little hatch over there that act, that you access from the back side. And at least until I get the servo in the top of the chassis for moving his head, that's it as far as our electronics are concerned. I'm still looking at ways to possibly do sound systems in him to give some beeps and bloops and give him a voice. But right now, I'm just concentrating on getting basic functions going. I want to get this guy to actually just move. Then we'll work on the head, and then we'll work on sounds. So that brings me to the detailing. The body is detailed. This part is really just like an old Kenner toy from the 70s and 80s. It's drawn... I'm, I've taken a black Sharpie and straight edges and just drawn the panel lines right in there. As for the color on the main body, I'm just using this 5-inch um, wide decal tape from the hobby shop. And it sticks surprisingly well to the Depron. I was afraid I was going to have stick uh, peeling issues with it coming off, but no, it, it does kind of stick pretty well, almost like flypaper to that stuff. So don't be too careless when you're laying it down. That isn't to say that you can't peel it off there. So it really is kind of good both ways. You can remove it, but it does seem to stick pretty well under normal room temperature conditions. As for the photoreceptors in the eye, yeah, as you've probably guessed, those are just um, garden hose parts. The head here is raw foam core board for now, as you can see by the masking tape. It's going to be wrapped in either 3mm or 1mm Depron, probably later tonight. The top of the head is raw Depron. Just took a circle, cut a wedge out of it, curved it around, and there we are. And I am already done showing you Pretty much everything there is to show you of R5T8 
as he is now. So right now, I don't have an exact amount of money that I've spent on this droid so far, but I know between the motors and the speed and the speed controls, the speed controls were 50 bucks each. The motors were probably 50 fifty dollars together. The receiver was 20, 25 dollars off of eBay. So we're keeping the budget down pretty low so far for now. I haven't gotten the servo for the head yet, um, and there's other things that are going to be going on here. But as you can see, we're on track to be way under thousands of dollars, way under a thousand dollars at this point. And I'll keep you guys posted.